Barakata Yahawa, Barakata Yahawashai, Barakata Yahawa, Barakata Yahawashai, Barakata Yahawa, Bashem Yahawashai, Bashem Akakadash. Dub honors and salutations to the elders and apostles and bishops and evangelists of Great Millstone, to the Akim and Akwath, try the four corners of the earth, holding on in sincerity and in truth to the gospel of the Lord Hamashiach Yahawashai, this Brahma Manasha DC Camp. Brief lesson, short lesson for the hopeful elect year. So we end these days and times, all right? These days and times, not those days and times. These days and times whereby we must uh, continue to judge ourselves according to the golden rule the Lord Hamashiach Yahushai has given us, all right? It makes it easy. Yahushai gave us the blueprint to make our journey in this ministry clear and simple. All right? Yahushai said that uh, his yoke is easy and his burden is light. So you already know exactly what you're getting yourself into. So uh, your job is to learn how to cope with the challenges, with the responsibilities of uh, walking the path. In other words, towing the line, Yahushai said, uh, we need to abide in. Okay, So, uh, simple, easy, straight to the point. Matthew chapter 22, when you read from verse uh, 35, further down to uh, 40, it makes it easy for you to understand what you're signing up for, how you maintain your office in this ministry. You know, it makes you... Uh, Firmly rooted and uh, founded, to the, let me say, attached to the foundation, unmovable, all right? Steadfast and unmovable, all right? So, Matthew 22, 35 says, uh, Then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a question, tempting him and saying, all right? So, definitely, you know, this is, this is a Levite then, all right? A Levite. <laughs> yep tempting him saying tempting the Lord Hamashiach so that right there is a is a great sin you know for someone to be tempting his master not knowing that uh, he's in grave danger of being condemned so this is just something we have to be uh, aware of man you know we see violations but we don't even know that they are violations you know, just like you read in the book of uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verse 1, you know, keep thy foot. You know, when thou goest before the temple of the Lord of Mashiach, Yahushai, before the altar of the Lord of Mashiach, Yahushai, Bashim Kadesh. So it says in verse 36, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Yahushai said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy power with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind so you have to commit your existence upon this earth to the standard the lord hamashiach Yahushai, had uh, made known to us you know, through his servants the prophets all right so the standard has already been made clear all right so this gentleman so-called gentleman knows it you know every israelite knows what the, th those two laws are you know simplified they all know that even the little children know that, all right? So, what's the issue? Then Yahweh says in verse 38, This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. So that's how you keep the balance of the brotherhood. That's how you keep the balance of the ministry. You know, that's how you maintain the relationship between the servants of the Lord. That's how you, how, let me just say unity, all right? The spirit of unity. That's what it is. When talking about balance, we're talking about unity, okay? So, uh, unity, integrity, all right? They all work uh, together, all right? It's the partnership between unity and integrity, all right? You all speak the same thing according to the will of the Lord as he has revealed unto his servants the prophets all right so it's, it's that clear man you know it makes it easy for you to know exactly what is expected of you to progress in this ministry 
how to build brothers up, how to, you know, have a self-improvement, all right? How to correct brothers, how to correct yourself also, how to identify that spirit of hypocrisy, all right, that uh, runs rampant among the brotherhood, you know, because it's just the leaven, it's the leaven that, that uh, we all have to deal with, you know. So you're working on that uh, leaven, you're purging it out. You know, it's not a one-day affair. It's not a one-day assignment. It takes years and years and years and years to identify those trace amounts of uh, hypocrisy that we all have to purge out. You can't purge everything out in one process. It's, 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 a, it's, it's a lifetime, right? It's a lifetime you have in this ministry to purge it out until the Lord Hamashak Yavashai said, okay, well, you've reached an acceptable level of uh, purification, so you qualify for salvation, okay? So that's how it is, man. You're purging out that spirit of hypocrisy, that leaven, until the Lord deems you qualified for the next stage, okay? So that's what it is, all right? And then it says in verse 40, on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. All right, so it helps you to identify the path you have to travel. All right, when you have conflict, you know, you know exactly what you're supposed to refer to. Having a conflict doesn't mean you should destroy yourself and destroy brothers around you. You know, bearing that uh, spirit of malice, that has no place in, 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 uh, in this ministry. So you have to learn how to maintain the unity of the spirit. All right. That's why, you know, you have to learn to judge according to the standard the Lord Hamashiach Yahushai has revealed to you in Matthew chapter 22 from verse 37 to 40. All right, that's what it is. You know, keep it simple. Yahushai didn't make this ministry complicated. So why, why are brothers, you know, making things complicated and then trying to, you know, justify that, you know, that they are... You know, the, the confusion that they're trying to cast out among brothers. You're not supposed to bring confusion to the brotherhood. You're supposed to bring clarity. You're not supposed to be bringing uh, issues of conflicts that continue to expand and expand and expand. You're supposed to bring solutions to the brotherhood, solving problems. That's what we're about. We're in the business of solving problems, you know, pushing out that spirit of confusion, pushing out that fear, spirit of doubt and ignorance. All right, we're problem solvers in this ministry. For you to build, you have to learn how to solve problems. All right, you have to know how to get materials you need. All right, you know how to uh, understand the structure of uh, the building that you want. You know, and the and and the reason why you need the building. You know, all those questions you have to ask yourself. Why are you in this ministry? What do you want to gain from it? You know. What's it going to cost you to start? What's it going to cost you to be in this ministry on a daily basis? What do you want to achieve at uh, different steps of this ministry, right? So you have to answer those questions. You have to resolve them in your mind. And you have to, you know, introduce brothers to the process of uh, solving problems. You know, that's why brothers do breakdowns. That's why the apostles, you know, they bring lessons to the brotherhood so that we can all build and grow together it's that simple you know we all work in the same vineyard so why not uh, work as as partners all right so that's basically just a, a simple part of uh, this lesson so now we go to the book of uh, luke luke chapter six all right so um let's look at uh, verse 37 see what it says it says judge not and you shall not be judged condemn not and you shall not be condemned forgive and you shall be forgiven all right so that's easy all right you're not perfect so you have to understand what it takes you know to uh be on that path of correction all right that's what it is when you forgive someone in other words you're saying that you know what I acknowledge that uh, an offense has been uh, been made, and that's how we correct it. You know, you just don't forgive someone and just uh, let the person fall by the wayside. You're supposed to guide that person, 
take lessons you can learn from the situation and uh, and you move on man you know you just don't condemn a brother you know because of uh, his ignorance you know when a brother doesn't want to go along with the testament of lord of my shack you know then you know his condemnation will be uh justified but for little situations you just have to learn how to address it as a, as a grown adult all right so uh luke 6 37 judge not and you shall not be judged so in other words you have to learn how to apply the 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 the, the spirit of the law the spirit of mercy and learn how to use that to uh help the brotherhood grow help brothers see the errors of their ways help you know brothers uh, fix whatever issues they have been struggling with we all have struggles so your job is to learn how to introduce brothers to techniques of uh, coping in this ministry you know it gets overwhelming sometimes you know but brothers uh run to the bottle real quick but uh, they don't understand that you got to pray man if you know how to exercise the spirit of the lord then you know that uh that's the best solution that's the best therapy you could have to solve your problems Having access to the Spirit of Lord Amashah, Kiawashai, opens doors, you know. Like they always talk about those uh, different levels of chakra. Yeah, the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of the Lord helps you to access, you know, the, the, the Spirit of the Lord, what He wants, what the Lord wants you to do, how to serve Him on a higher level, how to get in tune with who the Lord wants you to be. So remember that, all right? So it says, uh, judge not and you shall not be judged, condemn not and you shall not be condemned, forgive and ye shall be forgiven. So that's the balance. You have to learn how to turn the other cheek. You have to learn how to build according to the standard. Do not destroy yourself because of uh, someone's offense, you know, against you. Don't don't uh, let that be uh, 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 a habit, all right? That's one thing that makes brothers fall out of this truth. Just because of an offense, they destroy themselves, man. You know, egos and all that stuff, man. You're not perfect, man. The Lord says, you know, you're going to have troubles in this world. You're going to have troubles in the flesh. So why do you want to destroy yourself because of a brother's fault? You know, you can't, you can't do that. You have to learn how to move on, you know. Even when you have a shy, him choosing all the the apostles, you know, they, uh, you think they all got along? No, they had to iron it out. You know, they all had to iron it out. That's how it is, man. They understand that uh, what they were called to do is much more important than their personal perspective. All right? So that's the reason why the ministry had to grow. They all put their differences aside, whether they had beef in the world and all that stuff, you know, task collector harassing a fisherman or the, or the physician and all that stuff, you know, you know that they, they understood what is at stake, all right? And they knew what Yahawashah was capable of doing, so why them, you know, why not they, you know, uh, put it aside, put their, 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 their qualms aside and move on, you know, because they, they understood the the... the the situation that the whole nation was facing you know they had access to the scriptures they knew exactly what had to be done so why would they want to continue to re repeat the cycle of being a den of uh of vipers you know like the unrighteous so they knew exactly what had to be done and they accepted it all right so that's the same spirit we all have to have man. all right so um now we move on to uh uh, f move further down. Look at uh, verse 40, 46. It says, um, "And why call me? And why call ye me Lord? And do not the things which I say. Whosoever cometh to me and heareth my sayings and doeth them, I will liken. I will show you." to whom he is like all right so the sayings of the lord are clear in the scriptures man so you have to embrace it man you have to accept it 
Don't allow the word of the Lord to be a stumbling block to your life because you got offended of a brother's actions. It shouldn't be that way, man. Do not uh, self-destruct in this ministry, man. You have to learn to let the process of repair take place. You have to learn to heal, all right? The word of the Lord was meant for you to heal, not for you to destroy yourself and destroy brothers just because you want to justify your point. It's, it's, it's just so simple, man. You know, make this word easy for you to embrace, man. You don't want to be uh, condemning yourself because you trespassed against a brother. After all, what the Lord Hamashaki Awashai has told you to do, to love thy neighbor as thyself, all right, to trust in the Lord with all that have all that understanding, you know, all that strength, you know, love the Lord and all that stuff. So it's, it's so simple, man. You know, make it your daily mission to be in tune with what the Lord wants you to do. Stop making your life complicated by having unnecessary conflicts. All right, so unnecessary strife. It doesn't help the brotherhood grow. It's basically a distraction. While the enemy is gaining momentum, you know, brothers are bickering among themselves about who is right, about who is wrong. You know, just squash it, squash all that stuff and focus on what the Lord has uh, called us to do, man. You know, stop uh, making this word of the Lord so slippery, man. The word of the Lord is supposed to have traction, you know. Traction, man, you know, traction. So your brothers could have a, uh, a process of moving forward, man. You don't want brothers falling backward, man. You know, you want brothers to be able to stand uh, with stability. Remember that. You have to have brothers stand on a stable ground. You're not bringing uh, cracks, all right, to this ministry. You're not trying to crack the foundation. You try to strengthen it, all right? That's what it is. Yeah, that's so simple, man. Don't make your life complicated because of... Uh, your uh, faults okay so another precept is just basic principles you have to uh, get uh, adjusted to all right so this is going to be from the book of uh, first corinthians chapter 7 and verse 35 so this is it and this i speak for your own profit all right Actually, uh, it is, uh, yeah, I'll just get straight to the point, man. Yeah, this is it. Yeah, but the main point is in verse 25. So, you know, the Spirit of the Lord make me jump. <laughs> Ten verses. First Corinthians 7.35 And this I speak to your own prophet, not that I may cast a snare upon you, but for that which is comely. And that you may attend upon the Lord without distraction. See? So, sometimes, man, you got to be careful, man. In this ministry, man, the Lord wants you to get the job done. When you think you want to do your own thing, the Lord will divert your mind to do exactly what He wants you to do. So remember, man, stop harboring that spirit of conflict, the spirit of... Uh, of negativity in this ministry man it doesn't help it's an energy drainer all right it's uh something that uh you gotta be careful about the seducing spirits man they get tangled up with your emotions your, your feelings and then before you know it you're causing strife among the brothers man you have to learn exactly who you came to serve why are you here to serve the lord all right so i get straight to the point uh let's see Yeah, so here's the point. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 25. Now concerning virgins, I have no commandment of the Lord, yet I give my judgment as one that hath obtained mercy of the Lord to be faithful. All right, so you have to remember that, man. When the Lord shows you mercy, you have to be faithful to the process by which you receive that mercy. All right? So you don't go about creating problems, man. All right. So you see that if when you read these verses, so I suppose uh, therefore that it is good for the present distress. I say that it is good for a man so to be. And thou bound to a wife, seek not to be loosed. And thou loose from a wife, 
seek not a wife. So he's basically addressing every angle he can, you know, set his mind on. All right. He's not basically creating conflict. He's telling folks, man, if you're in this situation, just, you know, try this out. If you're in that situation, do this. All right. And it says, if you're in this situation, in verse 28, but if thou marry, thou hast not sinned. And if a virgin marry, she hath not sinned. Nevertheless, such as, nevertheless, such shall have trouble in the, in the flesh, but I spare you. So he's not, he's not blaming nobody. He's basically telling you what you're going to experience. So you know exactly what you signed up for. When a woman decides to get with a man, when a man decides to get with a woman, there's nothing wrong with that. And, and, and you believe in the Lord, Hamashiach, Yahushai, you know you're going to have situations you have to deal with, so you already know exactly the steps to take. So this is what this uh, precept is talking about, all right? So that's what it is, man. You know they did not sin, but I say, but this I say, brethren, the time is short, it remains that both they that have wives be as though they had none. Okay, so you wouldn't uh, let your whole existence, you know, be consumed by your relationship with your woman. You know what a woman needs. A woman knows what she needs, you know. So she wouldn't want to be a, a, an obstacle to the salvation of her household. All right. So she's basically, you know, praying for her man to uh, serve the Lord in spirit and in truth. So that's what it is. You know, this world is not just beneficial for men only. It's also beneficial for women. So that's how it is, man. It's, it's clear. You know exactly what's expected of you in this ministry. And you do your part to make sure everything works smoothly. So that's what this uh, short precept is all about. You don't want no distraction. You want attraction. You want traction. All right. So you could have a, a, a grip of what you signed up for. Okay. That's what the focus is all about. Focus allows you to have a grip on what you need to do. Okay. So, uh, Matthew chapter 23. Let's see how this goes. And uh, 23. What does it say? It says, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye pay tithe of mint and anise and cumin, and have committed and have omitted the weightier matters of the law, judgment, mercy, and faith. These ought ye to have done and not to leave the other undone. So you have to know exactly what you signed up for. You know, don't get distracted by the appearance of things all right be attracted to the spirit of the calling to which you have been called to all right so when uh yahweh shai chastises our people that say they serve the lord only for appearance purposes but they lack the spiritual uh, motivation then they have to be called out and that's what this ministry is all about, man. It's about correction, man. When you know you're doing stuff basically for the flesh, you're going to have problems, man. You're going to have a conflict, okay? But when you move based on what the Spirit of the Lord is all about, the Spirit of salvation, yeah, then you know exactly what you have to fix. You're not so uh, carried away by the things you see, right? Yeah, we shall talk about in your faith. You know, you walk by faith and not by sight you know because uh deception man deception is all about the appearance you know it's all about uh you know using deceptive uh, intents to mislead people you know so that's why this ministry is very very uh intent i mean say very very uh dedicated to faith okay faith is all about it a man cannot uh fake his faith before the spirit of the Lord. Remember that, man. But before the people, it's easy to fake it with uh, the appearance of things. Okay? So when you understand what faith is all about, you have to judge the person's actions. 
All right. Judge the person's actions. There's always unity when it comes to faith. There's always unity between the actions and the intent. All right. There's a pattern of consistency, the pattern of uh, righteous works. All right. Fruits meet for repentance. Okay. That's how you verify if a person is in the faith of the Lord of Mashiach or Shai or not. All right. Now we go back to the basics from the book of uh, Deuteronomy. Now we see um, in chapter 1, look at uh, verse 15 and 16. It says, So, this is our forefather Moses talking to our people. So I took the chief of your tribes, wise men and known, and made them heads over you, captains over thousands, and captains over hundreds, and captains over fifties and captains of tens and officers among your tribes and why did he do that and i charge your judges at that time saying hear the causes between your brethren and judge righteously between every man and his brother and the stranger that is with him so you have to learn to understand the structure of uh being a part of this ministry, the burden, the responsibilities you've been assigned and you know signed up for, all right, what you've been assigned to doing, and what you signed up for, all right, you're trying to maintain the the the, the balance, the integrity of the nation, the integrity of the brotherhood, by doing what is expected of you, applying the principles of judgment, mercy, and faith, all right, you do not judge unrighteously judge according to the law the standard of the lord that he has given you all right you do not uh, judge to mislead the people you judge to uplift the people according to the standard of the lord all right so that's what it is man you know do not uh, mess things up i mean uh, forefather moses go further in verse 17 you shall not respect persons in judgment but ye shall hear the small as well as the great, and ye shall not be afraid of the face of man, for the judgment is your house, and the cause that is too high for you, bring it unto me, and I will hear it. All right. So that's how it is, man. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a principle of cooperation. You know, they're all working together to achieve the same goal, to maintain the integrity of the nation, to make sure that the brotherhood stays strong and intact. That's all it is, man, promoting unity, man. That's all the Lord wants us to be about. All right, purging out the unnecessary. You know, all these superfluous uh, actions that's not necessary for the ministry, let it go. It's just a distraction, man. Focus on the on the meats and the, and the steaks and potatoes of uh, of, uh, of this ministry, man. All right, leave the gravy alone, man. Leave the, the icing on the cake alone, man. Just focus on what you really need to do, all right? Stick with what is most important, all right? Stop, uh, you know, spending too much time in your feelings, man. All right, it doesn't really help you. Just let it go, all right? When you spend too much time in your feelings, you get distracted, as to what you need to do. You're not uh, looking at the standard when you're basically uh, looking, you over, you, you're looking too much at your feelings instead of you looking at the standard the Lord has set before you. All right? So another precept, Lord willing, this is the last one, keep this lesson short. So uh, Matthew chapter 24, uh, 45 to 51, it helps you. To know what you need to do, man. It's that simple, man. This is what it says. Matthew 24, verse 45. Who then is a faithful and wise servant whom his Lord had made rule over his household? So remember what our forefather Moses did? Choosing the captains over hundreds and fifties and all that stuff. In other words, to do what? To judge righteously among the people. All right? So it basically made them rulers. All right? Matthew chapter 24, verse 45. Who then is a faithful and wise servant, whom his Lord hath made rule over his household, to give them meat in due season? All right, so that's 
a question we all have to ask ourselves who is a faithful and wise servant okay verse 46 blessed is that servant whom his lord when he cometh shall find so doing doing what judging righteously among the people okay verse 47 verily i say unto you that he shall make him rule of, ruler over all his goods but if that evil servant shall say in his heart, My Lord daily it is coming, my Lord daily it is coming, and shall begin to smite his fellow servants, and to eat and drink with the drunken, the Lord of that servant shall come in a day when he looketh not for him, and in an hour that he is not aware of. Though the Lord Hamashak Yahushai would not uh, show up that doesn't mean judgment will not come so it's basically you know just say judgment man the judgment will come that's the whole idea when someone that the lord has a uh, set up to watch over the flock begins to uh, get distracted and do his own thing and become a tyrant and uh, mislead you know the, the, the his uh his congregation you know his uh fellow servants what do you think the Lord would do? Basically send judgment upon him. That's just what it is, man. Judgment out of nowhere, man. You know, condemnation. The final nail in the coffin. Yeah, so that's what this precept tells you about, man. The Lord of that servant shall come in a day when he looketh not for him. So when he least expected the judgment to come true, man. All right. When he looketh not for him, and in an hour that he's not aware of so you got to be careful man verse 51 i shall cut him asunder and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites and there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth all right so that spirit of hypocrisy man is dangerous man you have to learn to uh shun it when it tries to you know creep up on you you know brothers you know sometimes man you know the, it becomes a, a situation that they get exposed to but they don't then they don't understand that uh they're getting distracted so you gotta cut yourself quickly man you gotta pray that if you're able to spot that spirit of, of uh, hypocrisy and don't allow uh don't entertain it man don't entertain it because it could make you fall apart man it could make you lose so much uh, gains in this ministry man you know, when the Lord has given you an opportunity to do His will, do not let that turn into a loss. When you are ahead, keep on gaining momentum, man. Do not slow down and uh, be taking L's after L's, unnecessary L's, man. You know, you have to count the cost. You know exactly what you've been signed up to, you know, to to be a part of. So, why don't you see through to the end to get the maximum profit, the maximum potential? That's all it is, man. So that's the point that I can, you know, you have to judge thyself according to the golden rule, man. That makes it easier for you to understand what it takes to uh, complete the process of correction. The cleansing that you need, the cleansing, the cleansing that the whole body need, needs, man. All right, the scripture talks about the whole body, the whole head is sick and all that stuff. So you understand where to apply the ointment. So that's your job, man. Apply the ointment where the ailments are, man. That's how the body gets healed. Your job is not to keep on smiting the body while the body is sick. You know, you have to bring healing to the ministry. And as a point, Deakim, Bashim El Shai, Bashim El with the approval of Yahweh Shalom.